Okay, in this video, we're covering um, the Pythagorean Theorem, reviewing this concept that we should have learned um, in Math 8. And we're going to talk about its converse and how we can use the converse to help us classify triangles. When we say classify triangles, there's only a few kinds of triangles that we're going to look at. One of them is a right triangle. We're going to use those quite a bit this year. Um, the other would be an acute triangle, where all the angles are less than 90 degrees. And the other would be an obtuse triangle, meaning that one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees. So obtuse would look something like this, where it has a large angle. An acute triangle has all small angles, or less than 90 degrees. And then a right triangle has one that is exactly 90 degrees. Okay. If it's a right triangle, um, the first theorem or relationship that we learn about the parts of a right triangle is that... <clears throat> um, we can apply what we call the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem, again, applies to right triangles. So if it's a right triangle, then the square of the length of the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always the longest um, piece of the triangle, and it's always the one that is opposite of the right angle. So even if we flip our triangle around and around and around, it's always the one that is longest, and it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. So in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the legs, and the legs are these guys down here. So what does that mean? Well, we like to write that as leg squared plus leg squared is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. And it's very common when you first learn this that teachers just say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, that's only true if we label the triangle accordingly. Um, just to kind of show you what I mean, if I label this instead as triangle X, Y, Z, then I'm not using A, B, and C. Um, remember we use capital letters for the vertices, and if I want to name a leg or a side length, then the leg that is opposite of the angle capital X would be labeled lowercase x the side that or leg that is across from capital angle Z is lowercase z and the one across from Y is lowercase y. So in this case if I'm expressing this in the Pythagorean theorem this would be z squared or leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So it just depends on what your triangle is named um, and how you would write that. Now, <clears throat> sometimes when we use the Pythagorean Theorem over and over and over again, we find that there are specific um, sets of positive integers um, that satisfy this equation all the time. For example, um, if you were to tell me and give me a drawing of a triangle where one leg is 3 and the other leg is 4, I can tell you without any calculating that the hypotenuse would be length 5. Um, 3, 4, and 5 are what we call a Pythagorean triple because um, 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. Those whole numbers work every single time because 9 plus 16 um, is equal to 25. That works every time, all the time. And any multiple of 3, 4, 5, so 6, 8, 10 would also work. Any sets of 3 whole numbers that satisfy this equation are called Pythagorean triples. Okay, Not as important that you memorize a ton of these if you have a very... Um, quick math brain and love to memorize little things, this would be kind of a list of these you could memorize. Um, <clears throat> so if we were just applying the Pythagorean Theorem just to get cobwebs out, um, this says find the value of x, if not an integer, leave an exact radical form, then tell whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. So again, if you look at this triangle here in example one, it's upside down, right? There's my hypotenuse across from the 90 degree angle. So I'm going to go leg squared, or in other words, five squared, plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So in this case we've got 25 plus 144 equals x squared. Well 25 plus 144 is 169 and if I square root to solve for x then x is equal to 13. Um, 13 right is a whole number and it was built off of these other whole numbers so another Pythagorean triple right 5, 12, and 13 is a Pythagorean triple. So that would be our two answers there. Again, those are whole numbers, values that will work every single time. 
Um, if we look at example two, and we go through this, again, my hypotenuse is the 14, so we're going to go leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. We get 49 plus x squared is equal to 196. We go ahead and subtract 49 from 196, and we end up with 139. Let's look at it. 196. We'll go fast. 147, excellent. We square root both sides, and we get the square root of 147. Now, if that breaks down, we will break it down. It looks like it's divisible by 7. So 7 and 7. So in this case, x is 7, square root 3. Now, I didn't include the plus or minus because this is a length, and it will never be a negative length on this. So x is equal to 7, square root 3. If x is 7 square root 3 up here, um, these three, right, those, these two are whole numbers, but this one's not a whole number. So these three together don't form a Pythagorean triple. So we would say not a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so just getting our cobwebs out using Pythagorean theorem and then adding a little bit of vocab in there. Um, I'm going to skip over this one. You're welcome to work through it. You're just using the Pythagorean theorem with one of these triangles to identify the length of that support beam. Um, On to the back page. So <clears throat> the triangle inequality theorem and then these other two theorems here at the bottom um, are going to tell us, can it make a triangle? And then with the two theorems lower, uh, what kind of triangle would that be of the three types that I talked about at the very beginning? So first of all, triangle inequality theorem. Let's just um, think about this just a little bit. Um, if I have a length or a line here, and let's say it's uh, length 6, and then I have another length here that's length, let's say, 2, and I have another length here that's, say, 3. Um, the question is, can the lengths 2, 3, and 6 form a triangle? Now, if you look at the diagram, and I've purposely drawn it this way, um, if I try and touch 2 and 3 together, I try to bring them together, what happens is the 2 eventually just falls down right here, right? Now your 2 is laying down, and your 3 is laying down right here. Um, these will never touch when we collapse those sides uh, because they're not long enough, right? That base is 6 units long. Um, same thing would go if this is 6, and let's say this is 3 now, and this is 3. I can try and touch those, but they're going to lay down. This will be 3, this will be 3. They'll come together, but they'll just form a straight line. So the triangle inequality theorem just says that the lengths of any of the two legs has to be greater than the third leg. Okay, so the sum of the lengths of any two um, sides must be greater than the third. And we say greater than, right, because it can't be equal to. So if we jump down to these examples and we're applying this theorem, right, we just know that any two sides, so for example, A, 4, 9, and 10, um, 4 plus 9, um, is that greater than 10? Well, 13 is greater than 10, so this is true. Right, that would work, and those would be able to close to form a triangle without falling to a flat line. Um, if I take two other sides, so let's say 4 and 10, is that greater than 9? 14 is greater than 9, so that's also true. And if I look at, let's say, 9 and 10, also greater than 4, well, 19 is greater than 4, so also true. So these ones would definitely form a triangle or could form a triangle. Um, if we look at the next one, um, again, we can look at all of them. The trick to this is you really only have to test the two shortest lengths. So like 9 and 8, if the sum of the two shortest lengths is greater, then the others will be as well. So 9 plus 8 is 17. That's false. Those ones are going to fall through. They won't create a full triangle, so it already broke. So this would be no. Okay, and then lastly, we've got 5 and 7 as our shortest. So if we add those together, is that greater than 12? The answer is no. Um, it's equal to 12, so it would form a flat line, and that would not work. So with this inequality theorem, we're just testing to see if these lengths that were given can even form a triangle. 
Once they are, <clears throat> once it's confirmed that we can form a triangle, these last two theorems are going to help us understand what kind of triangle it would be. So the converse of a theorem, right? Remember the theorem at the very beginning? We said if it's a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem works. Well, this just goes backwards. This says if, um, uh, yikes, if, and I'm going to put leg squared, plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So if this actually works, um, then uh, the triangle is a right triangle. Okay, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared is the most common way to write this. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, it's a right triangle. And remember, if it's equal, right? If we can use this theorem and it's actually equal. Now, <clears throat> recognize that these two lengths right here, these are always the smallest lengths. So if you're just given a list of values of three values and asked which, what the or to test it to see if it's a right triangle, um, you always use the smallest ones here because the longest one has to be the hypotenuse if it's a right triangle. Um, <clears throat> Pythagorean inequalities theorem says, well, sometimes they're not equal. So in this case, if we go a squared plus b squared, and those two little lengths are greater than the c squared, so it's not equal, um, then it's an acute triangle. Okay. Um, if we square both of those short lengths and sum, find their sum, uh, then, and it's less than c squared, meaning c squared can stand on its own. It's got this really long side. That means it's creating this obtuse angle. So this one would be an obtuse triangle. Okay, so there's those three kinds of triangles. Either it's equal, it's a right triangle, um, the a squared plus b squared is bigger, it's acute, or the c squared is the biggest, and it's obtuse. So let's try a couple of these. Show whether the following <clears throat> represents obtuse, acute, or right triangle. So we take this side. The first thing you want to do is just check and make sure you're choosing the two shortest sides. So square root of 113 is like 10 point something. So that's definitely the longest side. So I'm going to take the two short sides, 8 squared plus 7 squared, and we're going to see how that relates to the long side squared. Again, if this is equal, um, it's going to be a right triangle. If it's um, a greater than symbol, it's acute, and less than would be obtuse. So we go ahead, we take 64, which is 8 squared, and we add 49. Um, that gives us 113. And if we square a square root, this is also 113. So this just happens to be equal. So <clears throat> thus, it's a right triangle. Jumping down to the next one, same idea. You take the two shorter lengths. So again, if you're unsure of what is the 4 times the square root of 95, just kind of check it in your calculator, and it's 38.9 something. So it's definitely the longest side. So we'd say 15 squared plus 36 squared. What is that relationship to the long side squared? Okay, so we take 15, we square it, we add 36, and we square that. <coughs> Um, 36 squared, and we end up with 1521. We then square 4 um, times the square root of 95, and we should get 1520. Notice this AB side is greater than um, that C squared side, can't stand alone, so we know um, that if A squared plus B squared is greater than the C squared, this one must be an acute triangle. All right, let's do one more. <clears throat> this one says verify the segments. So this kind of puts them together. Um, with lengths 3, 4, and 6 actually form a triangle. So first we're going to verify that. Then is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? So first of all, to verify, remember we don't use the squares to verify. Looking back up at our theorem here, it's just the sum, right, of any two. So we look at the smallest two. Um, and if we look at that, that's going to be 3 plus 4. Is that greater than 6? Yes, 7 is greater than 6. Excellent. 
Um, if we look at any of the other combinations, they should also work because the other one worked. So that's definitely true. And <clears throat> 4 plus 9. Oh, I feel like I'm adding in values here. Sorry about that. 3 plus 6 is greater than 4. And 4 plus 6 is definitely greater than 3. So we verified that. This is yes, right? Forms a triangle. Now we want to know what kind. So uh, we take uh, the two shorter lengths, 3 squared plus 4 squared, and we figure out what that relationship is into in comparison to 6 squared. So 9 plus 16 um, is 25. And 36 is definitely greater than 25. So again, if 36 can, so if this c squared can stand alone and still be bigger than both of those combined, this creates an obtuse triangle. Okay, so those are the theorems. Um, being able to apply the Pythagorean theorem, then being able to tell if it's actually a triangle or not by looking at the sums of the sides, and then using the Pythagorean theorem and its converse to be able to tell what kind of triangle you're 